Hey guys, what is up and I welcome each and every one of you to a new League of Legends video. So as usual, like before, let's go over some of the changes coming to League of Legends of this patch, including new skins, changes to the game itself with balance changes and whatnot, and a couple other small tidbits here and there. So some new skins coming out. Apparently the League that we talked about the other day, which had... Some really troll skins in hey there. Guys, as so, this well. video is sponsored by FaceCheck. FaceCheck is a completely free League of Legends app that you can use that'll give you all the information you'll need to improve your League of Legends gameplay and knowledge. You can learn new champions, you can click on any champion, figure out you know who you want to learn, how they play, best you know runes, matchups. You can have post-game analysis that the game will tell you how you've performed in your previous games, what you could have done better. And the app also works while you are in champ select. Whenever you're hovering a different champion based on what you want to play, it'll show you the matchups and that champion's overall stats. It'll Give you your team's stats as well and even your runes and items for the champion you're currently hovering whenever you're in game it gives you yet another tool to help you out and give you all the information you need giving you a rundown of every single person in the game how they're playing their kind of tags and based on how they might perform whether it's good or bad the best part completely free app check it out down below guys but let's get back to the video apparently it's kind of true so the arcana skin line is actually coming out you can see with new skins now i don't think every single champion in, i can't remember what the leak I don't remember off the top of my head which uh, skins I had, or which champions rather had this Arcana skin, but the skin line was definitely in there. I just don't remember which champions had it, but nonetheless, whatever, it's not a huge deal. So that's pretty cool. That means this maybe some part of the league was actually true, and maybe some of those skin lines are actually going to come out, maybe just not for those champions. Either way, let's just get right into it. If you guys enjoy, don't forget to hit that like button. Let's do it. So starting things off, we have, of course, a preview of the Arcana skins. We have uh, Arcana Ari, Zaya. Rakan. I, I remember Zyra Rakan and Rise actually. Those three I remember. I don't remember uh, Ari and Hecarim. I, I definitely don't think Hecarim was in there. I don't remember if Ari was in there. Rakan and Zaya and Rise was definitely in there. Anyway, let's check it out. Damn, that looks really cool actually. I think the terror cards, the backing animation. Let's check it out. That's a cool backing animation. Oh. Skins are pretty sick, man. It's nothing too crazy, though. I'm not gonna lie. It's nothing too crazy, but it doesn't always have to be crazy. These skins seem more of just like... They're kind of simple. The backing animation is cool, though. The card thing is really good. Cool. But they're kind of like simple, just clean. You know, nothing too crazy. Nothing too over the top. Just nice, clean, somewhat simple. Very usable kind of skins, you know what I mean? Which is, again, nothing wrong with that, of course. Ooh, the rice skin looks pretty cool. Ooh, I like that little moon on the icon on the bottom there. When he uses the abilities. I do like the very end of the packing animation, how they all take that pose for the tarot card, sort of. That looks really damn cool. Oh, yeah, Hecarim. I feel like you can't do too much with Hecarim. Oh, no, so, never mind, even the Zelda doesn't look good. Yeah, Hecarim got the uh, short end of the stick here. The W looks okay, though. But I'm not gonna lie, it feels like he got a little bit the, uh, you know, shorter end of the stick there. Yeah, the, I really like the backing animation, like these card poses that they do. That's actually really damn cool. That looks awesome. Uh, another quick thing I want to talk about before we go into the balance changes and whatnot that should be coming for this patch is, of course, uh, apparently, in case you, you know, you're a collector or whatnot, Lux Unlocked Statue has come out, which is actually pretty cool. It looks pretty decent. I'm not... Let's take a little bit of a closer look here. I'm not gonna lie, the face looks a little scuffy. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Something about the face looks a little scuffy. I don't know if I can. I, I can't really put my finger on it. Fully. Something about the face looks a tiny bit scuffy. Here it looks okay, but the actual figure itself, it's not bad, but it looks a little creepy. It looks like she just got out of like some Botox injection appointment or something. I don't know. It's a little weird. Anyway, and then moving on to the balance changes. Let me move my camera over here for now. All right, perfect. So what do we have for the balance changes? So we have champion buffs coming over to Azir. HP per level is actually getting increased. Wow, Azir, what the hell? I mean, maybe they want Azir back in competitive play. Usually Azir is ba balanced around competitive play, rarely around solo queue. Uh, Darius with the R base damage going up a fair amount. Jeez, man, my goodness, 75 by rank three. I mean, I guess by rank three, 75 is like not as good, but 25, decent buff actually. Jax getting a buff, which is weird. I just, as far as watching Tyler stream and, or someone's stream, I can't remember who it was. M might've been someone else, I don't remember. But Jax is like, he was just taking over the game entirely. Apparently he's getting a decent buff, so his base health is just getting flat out increased by like 25, almost 30, which is a lot. That's gonna be like, huge for the laning phase. And his W base damage is going up by 10, which is also actually really good. 10 is not a lot, 
But the fact that he uses his W and maxes it first, I believe, as well, and uses it often as hell, is actually quite good. Nidalee, some buffs coming over to her. I don't, I never see Nidalee, nor do I ever play Nidalee, so I'm not sure how good these are. But buffs regardless, which is nice. Uh, Champion nerfs to heck of him, actually, so his Q is going down. You can see that the uh, base damage goes down only as you rank it up. The percentage is the same. And the E minimum and maximum base damage is actually also going down as you rank it up, uh, it seems like. But the overall percentages themselves are not changed. And then Trinomir, E cooldown, reduction on crit. I know like the Navori Quickblade and everything on Trinomir is kind of a ridiculous build. He just spins nonstop. So reduction on crit uh, went from one second, two seconds for champions to now. So they pretty much about roughly cut it uh, in about, about 50% or so, which is okay. I'm not 50%. They removed 25% off the top, I think. Math is hard. Anyway, so that's not bad. I mean, I don't know if this will change that much. I feel like he's still going to be spinning nonstop with that Novori Quickblade build, but we'll see how much this affects it. I doubt it. It'll change too much, in all honesty. But they buffed his, or nerfed rather, his ultimate. 20 second increased cooldown on his ultimate uh, rank 1, and a little bit, I'm assuming, by rank 2 as well. It's a decent amount. Then you have champion adjustment. So Rangar's getting like a small little mini rework, if you will. So now he gets one ferocity per leap. Uh... If you leap from zero ferocity, now it's like if you haven't already gained a ferocity from leaping since the last time you reached zero ferocity. The ferocity fall off time is uh, eight seconds out of combat, now being 10 seconds. So you, you actually have more time to like, I think this is more for his ganking potential so that once you get like full ferocity off of like a camp, you have two extra seconds to get into a lane to gank which is really nice. Uh, the Bone Tooth takedown time has been increased by double. Uh, the leap passive leap grace window after exiting a brush has been just, okay, so it's just flat out 0.35 seconds. I don't know, that's like, I don't know, it feels like a little bit of a nerf in my opinion. Buff early game, but I feel like overall that's a tiny bit of a nerf. But that makes sense because you have the extra ferocity time uh, out of combat, so it kind of makes up for that. And then the leap range has actually been increased. Okay, that makes a lot of sense as well, why it's been f the uh, the window has been changed for 0.35 seconds. You have a longer leap range. I already thought it was a long leap range. I feel like he already leaps way outside the range. Like, the circle's there, but he feels like he leaps Wait, well outside the circle, so I'm just saying, you know, it's a little bit weird, but okay, I guess now it's going to be even further. Um, unless maybe they don't change the actual circle around him, so now he actually leaps the proper distance based on the circle's visual representation. Uh, Q is now always a, a critical strike, and the damage increased by 0.66%, that's really good. Damage applies to towers, that's actually insane. And is no longer consumed on plants, it's also insane, almost always. I don't know if there's any time where you'd want it consumed on plants, the Q specifically. Um, the E cast time duration on the leap has been removed, which is insane. That makes this combo, I think, easier to do when you do the full combo out of your ult or whatever. Uh, grants true sight of enemy hit and normal vision. Wow, it's actually around them for two and a half seconds. That's actually quite good. And the R true sight of the nearest enemy now changed to the true sight of the nearest enemy and normal vision around them. Dude, that's actually really freaking good. What the hell? These are some solid buffs to Rengar. These are like a very nice buffs and mini rework, if you will, to Rengar. I actually like it quite a bit. System nerf. So Fleet Forward getting a bit of a nerf. Bloodline getting a bit of a nerf. Vampire Acceptor. So they're just nerfing Lifesteal in general, it seems like, across the board. Uh, and then, yeah, and for Orn's Blood Ward, what is that? I can't remember what that is. Also getting nerfed. So pretty much just straight up nerfing healing, which is good. I mean, healing is broken in the game. And then Ravenous Hunter is replaced by Treasure Hunter, which... I haven't checked it out in a while, but from what I remember, it's like a bounty collecting, like a gold snowballing-ish type, uh, what's it called, uh, keystone, oh, not keystone, but rune. And then we have treasure hunter, of course, oh, it says it right underneath. New domination miner, oh, when you claim a bounty hunter, stack gain 70 gold, increased by 20 gold for each prior bounty hunter stack. So good for someone that roams a lot, like maybe the Talon mid lane or something. Maybe even a TF, honestly, TF sounds like it could be pretty good. Uh, someone that just kind of roams a lot, or maybe like a jungler that just constantly ganks nonstop, and, you know, it can kind of snowball a little bit harder, so that's pretty cool too, but yeah, that's it for this video, guys. There you have it. They haven't released the uh, splash arts for this yet, so hopefully by the time maybe I release... Oh, there it is. Nice, just in time. We got one of them. We got the R. I mean, we got the only one that matters, let's be honest here. Ari splash art. Dude, that looks sexy. My goodness. They should be releasing them very slowly here. Uh, this one got released a minute ago, but uh, I'll probably have them on the thumbnail and stuff like that too, so... But, I mean, we got the only one that matters, let's be honest here. So, it looks sexy. Either way, thank you all so much for watching, guys. I'll see you for the next one. Peace.